Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello, and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name is Connor McKenna. Hey, yeah, this is Carl Bell. And today, we are covering Marvel Premiere 20, Batrock, and Other Assassins. Or, <laughs> also known as, It's Kung Fu vs. The Deadly Art of Savat, and that means Batrock. Or, also known as, Batrock's Brigade. Yes, again, three titles. We gotta beat the three title mark. I'm waiting for four. But you bef- may get your wish. I haven't been sneaking <laughs> peeks. Wow. It could happen. But before we get into this insanity, though, let's get into some other insanity. There's been a lot of Iron Fist news lately. Uh, first and foremost, the new series, Power Man and Iron Fist. Yes, in January. January. So we will be covering that once a month. Now, my question... For you, since you're in Australia, is will it actually come out in January for you? I'll have a look. I couldn't find anything on it. I'm sure it would, though. I don't think we get delayed dates. Excellent. You just pay twice as much. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I guess I'll get her on a poll list. Hmm. <laughs> Now, it's definitely a new stylized look. Um, yes. I don't know if they're going with the whole, like, surfer dude thing from the cartoon. But he he's definitely, Danny, anyway, definitely has an interesting new look. So he looks, in costume, they kept the living weapon outfit, which yep. I like. Which means they're not just ignoring that run, which is good because there's a lot of loose ends, to so to speak, at the end of that. But he looks like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo outside of his costume. Yeah, and if you if anyone hasn't seen the new costume, it's almost an homage to uh, the Bruce Lee Game of Death outfit, except the colors are reversed. Definitely. Instead of a yellow suit with black stripes, it's a black suit with yellow stripe and... It's, of course, got the dragon on the front, and he still has his, you know, kung fu collar going. But it's it's a cool look. I'm hoping, he, I'm kind of actually hoping he uh, stays with the three-sectional staff, too. Yeah, it's funny, because he doesn't really need it, but it does look cool. I remember in The Living Weapon, they were going on about how he needs a weapon, because Orson Randall had his guns, and... Yep. The chick had a bow. Yeah, I'm completely blanking on her name. Yeah, Wu or she or something. And then he gets the triple staff, and it doesn't really help at all. (laughs) He just doesn't really do anything with it, so it's just there aesthetically, I guess. Um, Well, maybe he'll later on figure out how to charge it and keep it charged so it can be like its own power weapon and... You know, it has its own distance. It can extend his reach. Yeah. But this is also if... a guy who sheared through an elevator with his bare hand without using the power of the Iron Fist. Right. And with the Iron Fist, he's... Uh, Done some stuff. Punched a <laughs> 5,000-year-old dragon the size of Godzilla in the skull and shattered its brain to dust, dropping it dead. Oh, uh, we could go on for ages about what he's done. He's killed a clone of Thor. He's... Mm-hmm. Taken down a heli carrier. I prefer his feats like popping the bullet out of his chest and like using the Jedi mind trick on that angry mob. That was great. I hope they continue his different use of powers in the new series. I mean, we may as well, yeah. I hope the book doesn't go away. If the book goes away, there's going to be an issue. Yes. The book of the Iron Fist written yeah. on the scales of the dragon. Yeah. With all the different things you can do with the Iron Fist, and he actually needs to write like ten new things himself. Yeah, he probably should get to that instead of yeah, just. Yeah, because as as of today, he has still not written a damn thing in that book. 
It's because he's only gotten one damn series since the living, uh, since Immortal Iron Fist, which was years ago. And the living weapon only ran for 12 issues, which is a shame because I would have liked to see it continued because I know that, uh, he referred to this. He didn't know if it was going to be continued, but he referred to it as chapter one. Right. The whole thing. Did you, did you know that entire series was drawn on the guy's tablet? (laughs) Really? There is no original art for that comic book other than the covers. Huh. The covers are the only things he took pen to paper. It looks pretty good for just a tablet. Yep, Every, that entire book. I think he said he scratched out half of it with his fingernail. Wow. On his tablet. It's pretty impressive, yes. considering it was some of my favorite art that I've seen from the series so far. Then again, most of the art in the series is good. Yes. Yeah, no, that was... that's Wow, that's interesting. Hmm. And I think his new independent comic, which is called The One, yeah, I don't think he's doing any actual physical pen to paper artwork. I think okay. it's all going to be electronic. Yeah, hmm. He definitely left that series on a cliffhanger, sort of. It's just... a very interesting cliffhanger. Yeah, it's a cliffhanger that just sort of came out of nowhere. I'm not complaining because it's it was pretty funny actually. It ended it on a bit of a lighter note. Anyway, we'll talk about Living Weapon in the actual Living Weapon episodes, because uh, we could talk about it for quite some time, which we will. And no, they are so... coming, and, and we're, we will be jumping ahead on that with the new Power Man and Iron yes. Fist coming out. We're going to jump ahead. Uh, it's not going to interfere with these episodes. These will still go steady and strong, but we will do a couple specials to highlight what happened in the series before the new Power Man and Iron Fist. Yeah. So if you are listening, you'll have a bit of a heads up. Uh, what recently happened in Danny's past. We will be covering uh, both parts of The Living Weapon, Rage and Redemption. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will not be covering The Immortal Iron Fist, because that's a lot, and it's been out for a while now, and I'm assuming some of our listeners has read it, have read it. Like, it doesn't have... Uh... But we're, we're still going to get to it, right? Oh, de- oh yeah, definitely. We're just not going to do a recap of it like we're doing of Living Weapon. Right. To get people up to speed. Now, in fact, also, uh, yep. up to speed, we've got the whole Netflix debacle that has also been all over the internet. Yes. Is it is Iron Fist cancelled? Is Moon Knight coming? Is Punisher coming? I don't doubt that Moon Knight and Punisher are coming. And I was on my Marvel game the other day, and people were saying to me, oh, Iron Fist is getting cancelled for Moon Knight. And I looked it up, and there's nothing there about Moon Knight replacing Iron Fist. Right. I can't... But... It definitely looks like Moon Knight is going to show up. If yep. it's a series or not, or I think more than likely it'll j- just be like anything else. He's going to pop up in one of the runs. It could be season two of Daredevil. It could be the Iron Fist run. It could be the Luke Cage run. I don't think it's going to be the uh, Jessica Jones runs because that's already shot. But I think he's going to pop up and they're going to wait to see what the buzz is. Yeah. And if the buzz is nuts all over Facebook, all over online, if it goes crazy, I think we will see a series because Moon Knight has been part of the whole Marvel Nightline from the get-go. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. It's pretty much we're seeing Marvel Knights. Yeah. But they slipped Jessica Jones in there. Yeah. She's the only one so far that really wasn't ever a part of the Marvel Knights. Was Iron Fist a part of Marvel Knights? Yeah. Okay. I remember Shang-Chi. I just don't remember him. He had a couple appearances in the Marvel Knight actual series called Marvel Knights. Uh, That was Luke Cage, I think, was in all of them. Shang-Chi was in a bunch of them. Moon Knight got in there. Iron Fist was in a couple. And Iron Fist was also in one of the Marvel Knights... Uh, one shots or specials it was him yep. and Black Widow on the cover oh uh, yeah I actually yeah I've read that I haven't read the Black yeah. Widow part but I read his part yeah that was another like haunt like triggered trapped house one wasn't it where you had to sneak into a house yeah it wasn't really ridiculous though in fact it was just depressing and confusing <laughs> I didn't I don't really know what happened but I know it was yeah, sad it, it, but... wasn't a, it wasn't a memorable story it had a really good cover and uh, I remember when they were splashing the cover everywhere about the one shot that was coming up that he was in. I was all excited. And then like three seconds later, I'm just like, uh, he 
doesn't have a dragon on his chest. And all my friends were just like, oh, my God, you're right. So if you can find, like, the original previews magazine and any of the advertisements for that issue before it actually came out, Iron Fist has no dragon on his chest. They fixed it in time for print. Yeah. But all of the pre-advertisements, dragonless. Actually, I really enjoyed that story because I didn't even know it existed, so I read it just the other day, and I didn't really have the hype going into it. Mm -hmm. So I was only expecting a few pages, and I was sort of satisfied with that little short story. Uh, Well, I still didn't know what happened in it, but (laughs) I feel like something cool happened, so... And the, the cover of that was good. It was, what, uh, Black Widow with Daredevil in the background and then Iron Fist with Luke Cage in the background, mm-hmm. implying Iron Fist and Luke Cage used to be lovers, I guess, but whatever. <laughs> uh. Yeah, let's... I don't want to see that series, honestly. <laughs> so, yes, so with the Iron Fist cancellations, um, we got, what, well, Bleeding Cool supposed. as a source? Supposed. it. I... The pessimist in me is like, of course, as an Iron Fist fan, of course it's going to get cancelled because we can't have anything nice. But, on the other hand, we have Power Man and Iron Fist coming out, which is obviously, hey, the Netflix shows are coming, you know, let's make these guys do it all again. Uh, right. We have... Let's not, let, let's not forget who they just cast. Yes, Jaron Hogarth, who's not in it yet, but he'll be in it soon. Well, it's a chick in Jessica Jones, which is sort of funny <laughs> yes. I don't I don't really mind that and it's Kate no what the hell's her name is it Kate Moss I have oh really hmm. no the actress from the from the Matrix okay I I, I, di- I didn't even look up who they cast as Hogarth because I yeah it's it's yeah. the it's the female lead from the Matrix movies she is now playing a gender gender swapped lawyer for Rand Industries yes Oh, did, did it actually say she's playing... Oh, uh, she's from Rand Industries. Yes. Yeah, how... In the article it said it that. Okay. And then there's this rumor from Bleeding Cool. And the rumor, right, is that Marvel has the capacity to cancel it if they want. Not that it's mm-hmm. on the chopping block. You just They just say that combined with the fact that Marvel having trouble with directions to go with the show is... And I... It's... There's just... It's people just screaming about nothing there's not well, really un- much there unfortunately my brother is in the television and film industry and he's in new york and he told me months ago they're having a lot of problems with the iron fist thing yeah and it's not even about the casting it's not even the directing their major issue is how to introduce the whole spiritual slash supernatural ability powers into this universe where Doctor Strange hasn't been introduced yet. Who can? Uh, the bloody movies. I, I know. I know who can. I know. I know. But this is apparently what my brother heard from other people in the industry. Some of them who are actually working on the series. Yeah. Because they're having a lot of trouble trying to fit this in before Doctor Strange is introduced. It's, it doesn't have much to do with Doctor Strange, which is the thing. They're both... They're both sort of magic. Iron Fist is even debatably magic. It doesn't... Yeah, it shouldn't really matter. Doctor Strange is a completely different kind of magic. Uh, you can you can make an argument for Iron Fist that there's no magic involved, besides well, I mean, there's the dragon thing, but that is just more of a force of nature. Mm-hmm. His is more channeling a power that is there and all around us all the time it's not like he's casting spells or it's the force (laughs) incantation yeah pretty much pretty much he is strong with the force young daniel rand well before his power got so huge yeah into what it is now oh crazy the the whole original concept is that martial artists could channel their chi yes and your chi is your inner energy. Everybody has it. And by channeling it, you are concentrating it into one point of your body, making that part stronger and more focused and more powerful. And well, that's what supposedly every martial artist out there can do that is trained in Kung Fu. It's still now, like that, but... 
Well, but what I'm saying is originally when he gained the power of the Iron Fist, all he did was he took the chi of that dragon. Yeah. Which is, you know, 500 times the size of a human. Yeah. Plus immortal. So we're talking like the chi force of a thousand humans now is in him too. Yep. So when he would summon the Iron Fist, originally he wasn't like connecting to this power stream that's out there in the universe. He was just channeling his chi, which is now backed up by a thousand plus points of the dragon chi also in him. Yeah. And that's why originally they didn't do it too much in these issues we're covering now. But later on, if he used the iron fist, he'd be done for the day. He'd like need a nap. Yeah. Well, now he can uh, essentially grab chi from anywhere. Really? Yeah. Like he can harness uh, everything around him. That, my, I noticed uh, in Living Weapon, because I was expecting a big kung fu drug out brawl, because that's how he sold it. But, well, he even admitted that he ended up changing his mind a bit, so it turned into a. Uh, a lot of it was about harnessing. Well, getting the ability to harness chi back and using everything around you, if you know what I mean. And um, becoming a Power Ranger. Oh, yeah. That. <laughs> I could not believe it. Like, I think my eyes started bleeding. I was like, oh, it, it was good, though, because it was just so crazy, so insane. I I want, I want that action figure. <laughs> <laughs> like, by the fourth issue, I was like, holy, how can this get any crazier? And by the 11th issue, I just think my brain was hemorrhaging. It was just crazy. Uh, by the 11th issue, Connor was like, make the crazy stuff. <laughs> No, I couldn't stop. That was the problem. Just, like, keep going. But I think the worst thing that could happen with this cancellation is that they will make it Power Man and Iron Fist instead of Luke Cage and Iron Fist getting a separate series. Because I cannot see Iron Fist being scrapped entirely. Because Oh, no. it's He's definitely not being scrapped entirely. The... There's no way. He will... People even said, because this whole thing was supposed to be turned into the Defenders. Yes. And too many and people all... are interested. Right, and all these little side stories and plots, and we're all supposed to then just go all into one, and everybody would be in one show. However, the success of Daredevil has already thrown that off track, because there was actually never supposed to be a season two of Daredevil. I'm and glad I think there they're is. almost they're almost done shooting that already. Yep. And that's the thing, uh, Stephen Knight, D Knight, sorry, however you pronounce it, uh, the showrunner of the first season of Daredevil, he put in no Easter eggs for Jessica Jones or Luke Cage, but he put a lot of Iron Fist stuff in there. They yes. had the heroine, which had the symbol of the Steel Serpent Davos, and as a Daredevil and Iron Fist fan, I was just... Oh, I was so happy. And then they had possibly Crane Mother, but who knows, that lady from Kunlun, obviously, who even attacked Daredevil with a chi attack. And he, he so... Like, he has put the seeds in there. They can just take inspiration from that season one of Daredevil... Because he put that stuff in there for future people to work on. What I think is a complete cop-out is supposedly somebody said that they cannot afford to shoot scenes in Kunt Lun. And I'm like, you don't, you don't need to see it. Yeah. It can be spoken of, mentioned, you can have people visit from it, but the comics are out there, the cartoons are out there, they're releasing all these trade paperbacks that all have the stories with Kunlun in them you really don't need much and if you, you want to do a flashback you can just do a flashback inside like a room where there's a bunch of them training and he's got his head shaved you know, stuff like that Yeah. Like, like, the, yeah. the perfect example is the Kung Fu the series with David Carradine half mm. the flashbacks of him training with the monks literally are in a room or two yeah there's also if they're worrying about the dragon the way i'd do the flashback is he's telling someone about i'm, I'm assuming he should be telling someone about what happened that's how they do the flashbacks or he's just remembering because he gets knocked in the head um <laughs> and De i will fall <laughs> off the couch if he, this series happens and he literally gets the concussion flashback. I will yeah. fall off the damn couch. But with him fighting the dragon, they can have him walking towards a door, ominous fire, 
and then flash forward to just some vague, smouldering, large serpent figure in the background, and him plunging his hands into a glowing brazier. It's that simple. Right, with a smouldering scar on his chest. Yeah, it's not hard, and with you don't have, as he said, you don't have to show Kunlun. Hell, you can show a picture from a book. You can be showing someone a picture from a book if they're that desperate. But mm-hmm. Kunlun, mystical Chinese city, what's so hard to get about that? They can, yeah, uh, it's. I don't know. They don't. They can make it grounded, like Daredevil. Oh, that it's not a hard thing. Hell, they did it in the Ultimate Universe. Not that I'm saying they should go that route, but. They and didn't show what, Kunlun in that. And what they did with the whole... What they've laid down in the comics of the portal that's in the basement of Rand Industries. Yeah. They don't ever need to go to the Himalayas to get to Kunlun, and they don't need to wait once every ten years. Pretty much. It's... There's... And... The, you don't even have to adapt a story. Like, the only th- reason Kunlun needs to be in there is for, like, his origin. And it can just be mentioned or shown in like those brief flashbacks stuff like that you don't have to show the city itself and because there's so many iron fist stories where it's not all about kunlun right and i'm sorry i'm sorry but i'm sure they can buy stock footage of some you know team trucking through antarctica yeah and then do close-ups in a sound stage of blowing white powder at people to reenact the whole crap that goes down yep that's so that- really doesn't fly as that is an excuse yeah it, there's you can even bring in Orson Randall and have a thing about that and that doesn't need to go to Kunlun or anything Davos doesn't need to go to Kunlun we gotta see Davos that has to happen oh yeah Davos is great he's such a jerk um, <laughs> <laughs> I is could the, the a-hole of Kunlun I'm I, sorry you're gonna have to beat that out the a-hole of Kunlun I could not believe he just. I thought he like would sort of redeem himself, but not. Nope. Time right. after time. What a jerk. D bag. <laughs> yep. I'm glad. I'm glad he's just super evil though, because Iron Fist. I mean, Master Khan is God knows where. He's pretty much dead at this point. So, yeah. But that that anyway. That's our topic on. That's our thoughts on the cancellation. Wes. Yeah. It. We don't think it's getting cancelled. No, I don't think so. It may be delayed. Yeah. But I don't think it's getting cancelled. Yeah. Because if this gets hot and everybody gets a second season, they might make him like Wave 2. Mm. Like when the Punisher gets... Because that's the whole rumors. The Punisher's going to blow up and the Punisher's going to get a series. They want to try to do the same thing with Moon Knight. That's why I think we're going to see him make an appearance first. So he might be part of Wave 2 of new introductions after seasons two of Daredevil and whatever else. He'll still be in Defenders, though, right? That's the whole thing. Is Defenders even going to happen anymore? That's true. Or is it Or is it just going to be separate seasons with cr- possibly crossovers? I could live with either, to be honest. Honestly, I think it would be better, because it sounds like it could be a cluster with... I th- everybody in that one show. If they didn't delay Iron Fist, they could do their defenders with uh, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, and Daredevil, like it was planned initially. But if Iron Fist is delayed, then it'll be more difficult. I think what they're likely to do with... If Iron Fist and Luke Cage are both both successful, they're probably likely to put them in the one series together, really. Mm -hmm. Um, That's how I think it'll go down, personally. And I don't have a problem with that. As much as I prefer solo Iron Fists, I'm not going to complain if he gets, like, more shows, and it's with Luke Cage, because any... go we've been waiting for live-action Iron Fist for how long now? <laughs> well, forever. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that... I think, when, what is it, like, 97 was the original rumor of the movie? 97, 98? Because, oh, uh, when I was reading the original Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider run, I always read the letter pages... And I think this is around seventy six, and there was they were talking about how like, oh they've got a Ghost Rider movie script or something, and it might go into production. Fingers crossed. So that means Ghost Rider fans must have been waiting for a movie for thirty years. Which was, and then they got then they got it, and it wasn't very good at all. And then they That's got another been one. My biggest scare. Yep. I'm like, yeah, we'll get one, and it's going to suck. 
and then they got another Which one is... and it sort of sucked, just not as much. Um, you know, I could do a whole podcast on the Ghost Rider movies and Ugh, how they everything. Please. Um, yes, me. Ghost Rider urinated. Yay. Me and Carl are both Ghost Rider fans, so we were, yes. uh. Yeah. <laughs> However, I think we're different Ghost Rider fans. I'm a Johnny Blaze fan. Oh, I love Johnny Blaze. I'm the only full run I've read is actually Johnny Blaze's original run. Mm-hmm. I'm only halfway through Danny Cat. Well, yeah, halfway through Danny Catch's run so far. They they introduced some cool characters in the Danny Catch run, but the whole haunted gas cap. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know like what this Ghost Rider is yet. It does, uh, for me, right now, it doesn't make sense that there's another Ghost Rider, because Zarathos is sort of a unique entity, but I guess that'll be explained. Oh, well, no. technically there's three now. That's true. Well, I've heard Robbie Ray's isn't a spirit of vengeance, he's just some angry a-hole is possessing him or something, I don't know. I stopped reading after issue six, so I actually can't answer on the ghost that Ghost Rider. That's the one with the El Camino or whatever it is. Funny you Camaro. mention that because I think Johnny Blaze pops up issue six onwards. Yes, the he rest does. Of it. Yeah, I remember uh, he was in he Shadowland. Whoops, he whoops his. Oh, awesome! Wait, Johnny whoops his. Or... Yep. Yeah, that's good. As Ghost Rider. Well, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, well, I mean, he nearly killed uh, Danny Ketch with the Hellfire shotgun. So. And then to only find out it hits his brother. Yeah. Oops. I gotta say, the uh, Blackout's a good villain. Yes, Blackout was a very good villain. Done okay in the second movie, even though they didn't call him Blackout. That's pretty much who it was. The second movie had good action, and it was oh, yeah. it was fun, like when he got in the big crane and turned that into... It, it, didn't, it didn't really feel like Johnny Blaze. It felt like an old, senile, crazy version of Johnny Blaze. Mm-hmm. Which was still more like Johnny Blaze in the first movie. Because I don't know uh, who that was in the first movie. Nicolas Cage for you, he's nuts. The, it, it, it wasn't even that though, it was just like he was eating jelly beans and stuff, and it was just... And yeah, the... but that was, all, that was all Nicolas Cage, he brought that, the whole jelly bean thing. God, really? Was, listening, listening to the Carpenters, all wow. that was Johnny Blaze. Or all that was Nicolas Cage trying to add to the character. That's odd. Wow. And then <laughs> there's Blackheart was so terrible in that movie as well, because Blackheart is awesome. I love Blackheart. In fact, I love Blackheart and Daredevil, where he first popped up. But mm-hmm. And he had the coolest design, because uh, John Romita Jr. is generally pretty good, but in the movie he's just some dude. It's just really lame. And he's awesome in the video game. Yeah, is the game any good? I've heard good. it's decent. You've never played Capcom vs. Marvel? Oh, I thought you meant uh, the Ghost Rider game that came out. No, 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 no. That's garbage. Oh, okay. Damn. <laughs> I was no, hoping I'm, talk- I'm talking about the the gray spiny version of him in the uh, Capcom, Capcom game. Yeah, I've played Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I currently have Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 because Iron Fist is in it. Yeah, I still got to get that one. I've, I've, my team is just uh, Doctor Strange, Iron Fist, and Virgil because I want ascending collars of ridiculousness. <laughs> so Doctor Strange has like the biggest collar, so he's my big gun. So. Anyway, we should probably get to the issue. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what <laughs> we spent a lot for. of time talking about collars and Johnny Blaze. So right. All right. Speaking of collars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Cow- I've made a note about. Cowls. This is the uh, and I was actually surprised on this cover of issue twenty. There is a mistake on Iron Fist's cowl. Yep. And they didn't even fix it for any when they of put the... it in the cart in the hardcover. No, not the essentials, not the masterworks. So probably not the epic collection. And uh, we usually attach a photo of the cover so you'll be able yep. to see that it has a weird, like pretty much it's got a sideburn. I'll put a big <laughs> I'll put a big red circle around it. Iron Fist's mask now has sideburns. But the cover is... Well, we've already uh, said that. I'll say it again, though. It's Kung Fu versus the Deadly Artists of Art, and that means Batrock. Martial arts action, as only the Marty Marvel can mix it up. And the cover is 
Batroc crashing through the window of an office and kicking Iron Fist in the chest. And Iron Fist looks surprised <laughs> at this development. Yes. He's not happy about it, that's for sure. Yeah. He is, and uh, Batroc is totally pulling off the uh, Captain Kirk William Shatner two-legged drop kick to the chest. Look at that mustache. <laughs> They're like alien antennas sticking out of his face. Yes. He gets cable with that mustache. <laughs> and he probably just watches French stuff because he is so French that French people would obviously be embarrassed by Batroc. Yes. And he's got kind of like a almost a rip off Wolverine Kmart Wolverine mask. Yep. Although oh wait, you know what this means? Wolverine ripped off Batroc in his character design. Mm. Mm. Yes, because Batroc was actually out first, wasn't he? For a while, I'm pretty sure. This is not his first appearance. Nope. So... Is he Captain America? Yeah, he's a Captain America villain. He actually popped up in the Winter Soldier movie, which I thought Scarlett Johansson single-handedly ruined, but Batroc was good in that, at least. I liked Batroc in that. You didn't like Winter Soldier? Mm, I liked it, but she was just so terrible and (laughs) bad. And the problem is, I like Black Widow in the comics, so I really hate the movie version, and mm-hmm. she got a lot of screen time in that movie, and the movie didn't have an aim. Was it about Bucky? Was it about S.H.I.E.L.D.? Was it about Black Widow's quips? What was going I, on? Actually, it was about Hydra, to be honest. Yeah, see, and that's another thing. It just has all these... doesn't know what it's doing, and friggin' Black Widow is a quip monster. She just quips everything. They could have used her as a ambiguous double agent figure, but no. Let's just... Anyway, I'm not... I could just start an Avengers hate podcast. Just going, <laughs> I hate the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And... Oh. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure I've annoyed someone, because everyone loves the Marvel Cinematic Universe, except for me, hey, evidently. And just, and just to let you know out there... We'll read hate mail, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Hey, we'll read any mail. <laughs> any mail will be good. Hate, if we get praise. if we get spam, we'll probably read that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a Nigerian prince uh, just emailed me. <laughs> He's found two... Mo- he has two million dollars he needs to dump, deposit <laughs> it into your account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so... Yeah, so they keep the same text box as the other issues. Yeah, we have the same paragraph across the top. Mm-hmm. Starts off with Iron Fist being assaulted by an obvious cultist. Their methods have grown less subtle. And he kicks him in the chest, knocks him out against the wall, and they're all atta- he's a bodyguard for Colleen's father now, and they're all mm-hmm. after that book. And Which it... has the secret of Kun Lun in it, or how to... Secret on how to destroy Kunlun. Yeah. So we have a good fight sequence here. About three of them ambush him. He assumes a horse stance. By the way, kids, do not... If you're assaulted by three death cultists in real life, do not assume a horse stance. Just run and call your yeah, parents like or call the police. Just don't assume a horse stance. All right, so it's a good fight. There's lots, lots of... Uh, actually, did the first guy have a turban on? Yep. Everyone's got a turban. All the, and I love it. It's I love a turban the turban party. Yep. They and... just finished their monkey brains, put on their turbans, <laughs> and oh are my out God. to get Iron Fist. Orson Randall in the Temple of Doom. Tell me you wouldn't see That's that true. movie. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> um, so it'd be, it'd be better because he has guns and uses them. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't go very long, I think, actually. <laughs> so they have weapons as well. There's daggers. There's a spear, which Iron yep, Fist there's... breaks with a right cross. There's size. Yep. There's the entire collection of Ninja Turtle weapons. Yep. Except for swords. And do not get me started on Ninja Turtles. Oh my god. <sighs> but, you're, but you're a Daredevil fan. How can you not Precisely. like the Ninja Turtles? Precisely. <laughs> the I'll... same chemical that blinded. <laughs> well, at least the devil is getting his due now with this Netflix series because it just wasn't fair before. It really wasn't. So he uses a right cross, and Lei Kung wouldn't approve of that, but he can't argue with the results, nor can Professor Wing. So right, he's just casually hanging out the window, smoking his pipe, watching his huge fight go down, where Iron Fist is outnumbered, and he's just like, hmm, well done. 
and Iron Fist uh, had my reaction. He's like, stop taking this so lightly. There's no humor in this. These people are trying to kill you and have been doing so for nine years, I might add. And Danny wonders, how has he been keeping them at bay for nine years without me? Which is a good question. Yeah, we really... Yeah, this issue, it's not really covered. It's not covered this issue, but it it is covered. There's a reason he's being so nonchalant. Well, sort of. And he told Colleen, which is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Colleen is glad that Iron Fist told him about the situation because... Yes. So imagine... for nine years, the guy's daughter has been completely in the dark of assassins trying to kill them. And Colleen is obviously dense. She... <laughs> She runs an investig uh, a, a PI firm, a private investigator firm with her friend, and she doesn't know that a death cult's been after her dad for nine years. Yep, and Misty is mentioned. Misty Knight is mentioned. Oh, yay, cool. Misty's mentioned, that means she's We're moving to today. Too. Misty can run hers and my business alone for a while. So that is Nightwing Restorations, which is their private detective company. Yep. And I just want to mention, uh, so the first, just the first page, because I just remembered, the dragon tattoo looks shrunk. It looks more like a bat. We have a new artist with this issue, don't we? Yeah, we should actually talk about that. So we have a new writer and a new artist. And a new inker, Ar- I'm pretty Arville sure. Arville Jones is the artist. And, and a new colorist. Is Tony Isabella. And yep. Dan Green is the inker. And John Drake is the colorist. Now, is there any difference in the coloring in the original copies, or is it still garbage? Um, with the artwork, the coloring and the inking both fall apart towards the end of this issue. Yeah. But it's very good and very tight on the original issues in the beginning. Okay. And, like, the last two pages look so rushed on everything in this issue. Yeah. I mean, they're a mess. The colors off, the inkings, the lines aren't even. You know, it's just bad. Yeah. The last, the last two issues are so rushed. Our last two pages. Sorry. Yeah. The fight is good though, but we pretty much already covered that. So they start. So they're talking in the room with uh, Professor Wing, and uh, Colleen's announced that Misty's going to run the firm on her own for a while, while Colleen lives in with her dad because he's being hunted by a death cult and. Then we have a recap of the last issue. Oh, yeah, of him finding the, the book. book. And that very night they tried to get him. And apparently they've tried to kill him nearly four dozen times since, and he's still alive. And he refuses to move out of the house. He's going to stay right there and complete his translation of the book, with or without Danny's help. And it's a bit of a jerk thing to say, because it's not like Danny has to be his bodyguard. Right. He's still, like, wanted for murder. <laughs> But well, I think the funniest thing in this whole blurb is he's like, I'm going to do this with or without your help. It's that important. And Colleen in the background just goes, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Father, you're s- how can you be so stubborn and uncaring? Yep. Yeah, what Colleen. About, I'm your da- daughter, and what about Danny? He's protecting you from all this garbage, and he has to clear himself from this murder charge. And then we get and a recap. We, of... A recap of the whole fake murder. <laughs> yep. Well, real murder, but just not Danny doing well, it. Well, not Danny um, murdering him. And, uh, yeah, Iron Fist announces then that he's going to confront Joy Meach- Meacham herself. And both the wings are just like, dude, you're crazy. What? <laughs> and, Surely you can reconsider. Now look at this page. Uh, the next panel after Sure You Can Reconsider. Look at Iron Fist's collar. Well, first off, I have to say on that page... Yep. I love the image of Iron Fist in front of Meacham's desk. Actually, yeah, that does look really good. That's a, just a great picture. But yeah, his collar all of a sudden is like up past the top of his head. <laughs> it's it's ascended. A swoop thing. It's like, when he gets excited, it gets bigger. <laughs> and it's just, it's just like, what the? What is up with that? I wish that was a thing. Like, it's... <laughs> It's also like Pinocchio. If he starts lying, the collar just gets increasingly large. Whenever he speaks of joy, his collar Oh, my God. <laughs> so, he... they There's a lot of dialogue here, and they're pretty much just talking... Ba- I won't read it out. They're just talking back and forth about yeah. how... His only hope is to find the ninja, not go to joy herself. And 
Professor Wing goes, but how does one find a ninja? And there's a lot of... So I get this dialogue coming from Danny. There's dialogue like this. I must go. Life is a road of many decisions. We cannot avoid them. We must make them. And he, as I did when I turned away from the fruit of the tree of immortality and the eternal people of Kunlun to seek vengeance on Harold Meacham. Revenge is bitter fruit. I would not have it destroy Joy Meacham. Now, it makes sense for Iron Fist to talk like that, considering he came from Fortune Cookie City, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a different way of speaking. But just some of Colleen... Uh, Colleen. <laughs> some of Colleen's dialogue, especially, and I just want, like, they'll... Okay, I'll read out the whole thing. Professor Wing says he's a special breed of man-child. Some would dismiss him as human weapon, and no more. But no weapon ever had a noble soul like his. A soul twisted by hate for ten long years and just starting to get straightened out. Then Colleen says, They'll twist it again, Father, they always do. And I just wonder what damage that will do to the cold and helpless ten-year-old that underlies that martial arts expertise. And she's pretty much crying at this point. And it's just, it's not in keeping with the style of the previous issues. This style of writing. It's falling into that very 70s... Uh, a lot of cliches where there's just over-expository dialogue from everyone and the Colleen is just acting like an emotional woman when... Yeah, this is this is sliding into a, a Spanish soap opera. Yeah, so pretty much all Marvel comics. And I sort of... I like Tony Isabella, but, well, I'm going to put the blame on him for that because he's taking <laughs> over as the writer and his, his Ghost Rider run was sort of like this. It was still good, but it's just all the exposition and melodrama it's definitely more of stock standard 70s marvel at the time 70s mediocre marvel anyway it's quite jarring to be honest especially to see colleen act that way all of a sudden not that she did much last issue but she didn't come across as a frail or emotional person and then we go to the next page where he sneaks back up into mr meacham's office undetected without any traps does pass a guy apparently with a handgun passes another guy with strange mutation to his hand while smoking a giant cigarette mm. if you look at that panel i don't know where those fingers are supposed to be coming out of but yeah. it would never be a hand that large well he's a mutant it's the marvel universe right that's that's the explanation that's, not, that's nightcrawler's father well so it looks like he's fingers. smoking a joint not a cigarette yeah it's just me though <laughs> No, it does. It's rolled. You can see the rolled paper. Yeah, that's weird, but whatever. He even comments a foul-smelling cigarette. Wow. Dun, 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 dun. And maybe that's why he doesn't see this freaking guy in, like, this yellow and green costume just sprinting around everywhere. Could be. And then Joy is just hanging out at her dead father's desk, going through paperwork, la di da di da And Iron Fish just walks up, and he's like, Joy, Joy, meet you. And she flips the F out. <laughs> Yep, her eyes literally go red in the coloured version, from blue to red. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she pretty much leaps at him, and something within Iron Fist dies, because he wanted to approach this and clear himself and be peaceful. And he feels sorry for her, because he knows how she feels. And she's so actually she's... like, spoiled daddy's rich girl, I've got a fortune, a fortune, I'm going to use every penny to get you. Well, she also yells out, you murdering swine, you killed my father. Yep. As she jumps at him. And Iron Fist just sort of grabs her arms as she's, like, pitifully banging his chest, I guess. And then Iron Fist points out that none of this makes sense. Why would he come here to plead innocence, even if he killed, like, her dad? He doesn't really need to do that, because he can just leave if he wants. And she sees the phone. He's about to leave, because she tells him to fob off, pretty much. And then she sees the phone is glowing. (laughs) Yes. And... The phone is glowing. Let's yeah. take that all in for a minute. Not a button on the phone. A button on the phone is not glowing. The entire phone, which is blue, is glowing. Yep, and it doesn't make much sense. It's Why doesn't it do anything else? Maybe there's like a special ring it could have? But no, just glow. And she... No, because the phone's glowing, that means Uncle Ward has been watching the hidden monitors. And we all remember Ward from last issue, which is Harold's... Well, Brother. Yep, who's also a jerk unsurprisingly and she has to keep Iron Fist there to distract him but she doesn't have to keep him there for long because Joy opens the door 
and introduces himself. Ward Meacham, Iron Fist, the brother of your victim. I take a certain amount of delight in knowing who has arranged for your demise. In your knowing who has arranged for your demise, sorry. Head for the shelter, Joy. It's time I introduce Mr. Iron Fist to his very special executioner. And he says all of this while leaping out. <laughs> Hitting Iron Fist in the face. There is no need for introduction, mon ami. For nowhere in this world are there ears that have not heard of the the skill and sheer power of Batrock the Leaper. And I'm never reading his dialogue again. Because <laughs> I felt bad. And he says all of that while jumping out and kicking Iron Fist in the face. So It's very similar to the cover, but instead of the chest, it's more of lower jaw, neck region. And I'll take that. It's... The cover's still relatively accurate. He's not crashing through a window, but whatever. And he automatically assumed the cat stance as soon as he heard the secret panel sliding open. But he wasn't prepared for this fierce attack by a master of savart, the French art of boxing with one's feet. Which, I don't know if this is a savart technique, just jumping into someone's head, but... No, I don't really think so. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned a little bit of savart and taking Jeet Kune Do, and that was never a move we learned. Yep. <laughs> So, the fight goes down, yep. and it's a long fight. It's got quite a few panels. One page has 16 panels of this fight. That's yep. a big deal. That's a good fight. And, of course, he mentioned, Batrock mentions... Uh, he's Captain he's America's foe. Yeah, he's been fighting Captain America, and you are but a child. And then he says a bunch of French words I'm not even going to attempt, because I don't even know if they're spelled right. <laughs> yep. And goes for another double kick, but this time Iron Fist's ready for him, and he uses a knife slash blow to, like, smack Batrock right out of the air. Yep. And even makes a crack that, yeah, I'm a kid, but you're an old man. The aged are ever easy to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> and Batro Batrock does not like that. The aged. The only thing I like aged is my cheese. Ha ha. No, wow. I actually say that. And my wine. <laughs> but uh, then he screams no mercy twice and then we go to the page with the 16 panels yeah which i love pages like this when it comes to fighting with all the different moves and maneuvers and they kind of just trade blows i mean iron fist does get the upper hand towards the end but even towards the end batrock gets a kick in yep and there's some grappling there as well. On Fist and there's a lot of, like, we've got a leaping deer block. Then we go to the blow of the hammer. Then we go to a flying roundhouse. Then we go to a dragon stamp, a leg sweep, a boulder block, a swing throw, a cross arm throw. And they just yell that he's still a master of la savate when uh, he throws his last kick into Danny at the very bottom of the page. And uh, then he gets up. And I'm sure this is not done in your version, which has been recolored. But in the original issue, I'm, I'm not even making this up. Mm -hmm. so it looks like the colorist or the printer press had a little bit of an error. And in the very last panel where Batrock is springing up, it looks like he had a little accident in his pants. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't get that. And I'm not making that up. I will post a picture of that. My yeah. copy, he's got a nice big smear in the crack of his ass after the whooping he just took. Definitely. That but Iron definitely Fist has had that. enough of his crap and summons forth the Iron, Iron Fist. The hand, that hand smolders and glows until it becomes like un unto a thing of iron. There is power here, a power you alone control, a power you know will stop Bad Truck's leap in midair. And boy, does it. Oh, yeah. Like a giant swatting a fly. Sacre Sac blue. blue. <laughs> <laughs> what manner of man are you? I am a man who gave up eternity for a revenge, Batrock, and has become the object of another's quest for vengeance. That is my fate. It is not required that I accept or enjoy this fate. It is also not required that I tell you all of this, but I do neither. And that tell you all of this part he didn't say, but... <laughs> yeah. I to say, my book didn't say that. <laughs> like, I'm getting gypped on these original issues. <laughs> And so with Batrock just having his ass handed to him, he's just like, oh, look, Monsieur Iron Fist, look at that. Batrock's brigade, at him, mon brave's brigade, equals roughly a thousand men. 
And so, like, these two giant panels slip open, and all these people in garish outfits and kung fu geese come bursting out towards Iron Fist. And even though it says Brigade is roughly a 1,000 men, and maybe there is, we don't really know, it does say Batroc exaggerates, but you have no time to count heads. Yeah. But... I think Iron Fist is fighting about groups of a dozen fighters. And if you count the the bodies and silhouettes quickly, you come up with like thirty plus rushing into this room. Just still crazy. Yes, all with different types of weapons, different types of blades, different types of haircuts, lots of ponytails. Ponytails were big back then for kung fu masters. I have to say the black and white looks better in this because the colors aren't so garish for all the uh, extras, so to speak. It's a bit I believe you in this in these panels the colorist really got super lazy did not stay within the lines but you also got to remember how small all these figures are yeah on this page and they're just like I think they're just slapping the brush there you go that guy's red that guy's blue that guy's green with the blue hat yep that guy has no face. Lots of faceless people also in these panels. Yeah. yeah so he is. is... Iron Fist assumes the one-legged crane stance as a dozen fighters close in on him. And a sword hand blocks one foe, and the others fall to a ram's head blow, a crescent kick, and a leopard paw blow. So he just took out 12 right there, pretty much. Yeah. And they're still coming. And I like the, the artwork, because he's just sort of throwing them around as well. Mm-hmm into each other, all yep. kinds of stuff. He's uh, just, blo- yeah, he's using them against each other, he's blocking, he's stealing their weapons. Yeah, and, and the, in the bow stick panel where he's like up in the air, he jumps out of the way of one guy who actually punches another guy in the throat. Yep. <laughs> so we're in for a big, huge fight. Yep. Um, they... Lots of thro- throws listed, lots of maneuvers lift- listed. Uh, his costume is slowly getting cut to shreds. They tear off he, his collar. Yep. Take it right off of him. It's about time and that happened. He gets a blow to the back of the head, which does not result in a flashback. Mm-hmm. And the guy jumps on his back and is about to stab him with a sigh, and out of nowhere comes the ninja to save his butt. The real killer of Harold Meacham is back in the building, folks. And so, for a short period of time, they pretty much, Iron Fist and the Mysterious Ninja, go back to back. Yeah, and they are and decimating even, their opponents. Even though Iron Fist tells them, like, I, I, I reject your gift of death, I will have no more of your bloody assistance, but the ninja just ignores them. And continues to kill. And, and then, uh... Mm. God, what's his name? Is it Ward? I forgot already. Ward Meacham. Yeah, Ward's at the at the com going, Batrock, I hired you to put Iron Fist in his grave, so I'm telling you, kill him now. And then we go right back to Iron Fist kicking ass, the ninja's just killing everybody with a sword. Meacham's like, I think I'm out of here. Yeah. Because Batroc's nowhere to be seen right now. And then he is. Name of a name. I will not have my men <laughs> slashed to ribbons by this dog of a ninja. Zot, he moves with the speed of the gazelle. Ugh. <laughs> Someone's going to hell for these lines. <laughs> And again, these are the last two pages. The artwork has been on a decline as the inking has, as the coloring has, and it's really showing up on these last two pages. Oh, and Iron Fist is blurry when he gets hit in the back of the head, by the way, a couple of pages before. And this second panel, after Batroc just dropped those horrible lines, I don't know how it is on the reprint, but in the original issue that I'm looking at, it doesn't even really look like the artwork was technically finished on Iron Fist on that second panel. I think Iron Fist looks quite good in the reprint, but there is a one particular bit where it's sort of, yeah, a couple of bits, 
I like the general pose and expression, but it does look a bit unfinished. Mm-hmm. The and the rest of the art is well, pretty much crap. Yeah, I don't know if they they. I mean, it did happen back then, so it wouldn't surprise me. I have to wonder if somebody stepped in for the last few pages and just ghosted this guy's art style. Or he just rushed it. Or that, or the ghost just rushed it because they were reaching the deadline, obviously. Mm-hmm. Because these last couple pages, artwork-wise, do not stand up to the beginning of this issue at all. Yeah. And so we still have a big fight. He summons the Iron Fist again and lays out like a whole room full of this guy of these guys, including Batroc, including the crazy Frenchman. And we have more second person narration. Yep, you are triumphant. Neither Batroc nor his men will rise for nearly an hour. That's some ass whooping if they're laid out for an hour. And that's that's really dangerous if you're like unconscious for an hour. Yeah, that's concussion central right there. Yeah. You will use that time well. Ninja, I would have answers. The ninja still does not speak, even when a weird cloud envelops you. I didn't have Taco Bell. (laughs) And instantaneously transports you across town. Kun Lun has taught you to accept such seeming miracles. Your questions are aimed elsewhere. Why do you interfere in my affairs? And why did you slay Harold Meacham? Again, the ninja does not speak but drops yet another smoke bomb and disappears completely, leaving Iron Fist clutching at some smoke with the largest right hand I've ever seen on a human being. Yep. (laughs) The ninja reappears before an open book on a pedestal. It's a very rare book. It holds, among other things, the secret to the destruction of Kanlan. The ninja seems to wither away, seems to leave the human form and enter the book itself. The ninja vanishes. And in his place... Is Professor Wing. It doesn't say that, though. And I love that. I love the idea that the book is possessing him, that this thing comes from the book and takes over his body. I think that's a really good twist. It's not out of left field. Obviously, art-wise, it's a bit wonky, but uh, narrative-wise, it's really good, and it makes it... Because... For me, the mysterious ninja, I was like, oh, it's a mysterious ninja. Oh, no. But this actually makes him interesting. I yes, think. It's, well, also, this had to be set up real early. Yeah. Be- because his uh, his appearance is what? Is it the second issue or the third issue? The ninja actually shows up. Third. Yeah, so by the third issue, I mean, it's not the original writer, but it was the second guy. They all seem to be aware of the general, like, plot line. They yeah, pass it yeah, on I, to one another, I think. I definitely think the original writer wrote out a treatment yep. of how these issues should fall. Because this is still all in line, it's still interesting, um, it hasn't gotten goofy or cheesy yet. It's... Overall, this issue... Uh, the I... only cheesy things, really, I think, in this issue are Batrock's lines. And some of Colleen's behavior slash lines. Yeah. I, I, think, I think overall this issue was a downstep from the previous issues. I'm not saying it's bad, it's still good. But yes, it was a step down, but still it wasn't bad. It's a step down in every aspect, but it's still not bad. And the twist at the end redeems a lot of it. And the big fight is good. Hopefully it gets better, but yeah, it just suffered. And why does Iron Fist care about killing all of a sudden? What's with that? He's getting cranky that this ninja's killing a bunch of mercenaries, but the Iron Fist of an issue ago would have not cared if they died. <laughs> it's, all of a sudden, he just... Yeah, what's with that? Uh, well, this is... That's his, I think it has to do with the whole that he's not out for vengeance anymore. I guess, yeah. The, the, the whole venge- vengeance mindset has been cleansed. But he's like a warrior of Kun Lun. I mean, I don't, I don't think Lei Kung would be opposed to killing, I assume. I mean, obviously there's the whole Comics Code Authority thing. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's a martial arts comic. But I guess it does have well, that truck in it. I, I actually think in the magazines, I think he does whack a few. Okay. Yeah. And that, mag, I'm pretty sure the magazine, because it was a magazine, is not Comic Code related. 
Because yeah. that's like all the all the Conan magazines had full on nudity and stuff in them. Well, that was like the uh, the Punisher had his origin story and stuff was explained in magazines where the comics code wasn't yep. a thing, and they were noticeably more violent than his appearances in Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, overall it was still a good issue. I just thought it was a lot weaker than the other ones, and like yeah. I just think no. the change of art and writing is a bit jarring as well. Yeah, the artwork took a huge step down at the end of the issue. It was yeah. really bad. The um, writing is generally a step down. Now, I believe Arvel does the next issue also. Let me just double check. Yep, Arvel Jones is the artist again in the next issue. And just to let you know, it's it starts off strong. Will it stay that way? You'll have to wait till next week. Yep. And of course, next issue, it gets wilder yet. As you and Iron Fist meet the living goddesses. Yep. Which is... That's one of, one of the titles. Yes. So, well, that brings us to a wrap, really. Any characters or music we use, anything we talk about, uh, this is all for free. Right. So, Iron Fist is the property of Marvel Comics. Yep, and uh, Batrock is also the property of Marvel Comics and France. <laughs> and they can keep him. <laughs> yep, so please don't sue us. We're doing this for free. We make our money. And yes, uh, all you listeners, I know there's some listeners, please feel free to contact us. We would love to discuss these issues with our listeners. Um, just any theories... Any thoughts? Any thoughts on the news about Iron Fist, even? Not necessarily the issue itself. Yep. The net, if you want to talk about the Netflix, something you may have heard. Talk about anything, you... really, as long as it's yep. vaguely related, I guess. <laughs> even, even like, uh, send us an email about our Ghost Rider rants now and then, or our Daredevil <laughs> rants. Uh, we'll talk about that, too. Um, so you can contact us at Sons of the Dragon Podcast at gmail.com. You can also reach us at our Facebook Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. Make sure you include podcast when you type in any of those phrases because there's a lot of pages, the Immortal Iron Fist and Sons of the Dragon, they both have pages. Uh, Our Twitter, at Iron Fist. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon, hyphens instead of spaces. Our YouTube, just search Iron Fist podcast on YouTube. And our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast dot WordPress dot com. And, yes, we will see you next week for The Living Goddesses, which is just as awesome as it sounds, by the way. Well, the cover, anyway. Yes, great cover. Until then, may your fists become unto things of iron, if that is your line of work, or uh, may your triple staff become unto a thing of iron, if you prefer (laughs) that way. But, yeah, peace. Peace.